week on Houston Newsmakers, the Houston Astros almost made it to baseball's ultimate goal. After the best regular season in baseball, it came down to the seventh game of the World Series before losing to the Washington Nationals in our own home park. What's next? Where do veterans and their families go when they need help dealing with the effects of PTSD? Thankfully, Camp Hope is here to fill that void. We'll talk about how it helps and what you can and should do to get involved. Bullying of any kind is not good, but in the era of social media growth, cyberbullying is becoming a much bigger problem, requiring out-of-the-box thinking and aggressive remedies. What you need to know to keep your children safe from this stealthy and dangerous attack. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. They are one strike away, one out away. 3-2. champions for the first time in franchise history. It was not easy to watch as the Washington Nationals celebrated on our home field at Minute Maid Park, but they did what they had to do. Now what? We have an offseason to go over what happened, what could have or should have been done to come up with a different outcome. What is clear is that what should normally be home sweet home was anything but for the Astros as they lost every World Series game they played at Minute Maid Park. Not good, since the reward for having the best record is to have that home field advantage. Oh, there were wins to be had, and nothing exemplified that, like the walk-off homer by Jose Altuve that propelled the Astros past the Yankees into the World Series. Uh, but that was the American League Championship Series, not the big one when it counted. No, against the Nationals, was the home cooking was on a stove with the heat turned down. There were plenty of wonderful performances by several players along the way, but when the dust had cleared, the Astros were outscored at home by the Nationals 32 to 11. 32 to 11. Good pitching with silent bats against a very hungry Nationals team was not enough. Not this time. Bottom line, we love our Astros and look forward to retooling for next season, hoping to recreate the magic of the World Series win of two years ago. For now, let it go and ignore the noise from Washington, D.C. Good advice on and off the field of play. Just ahead, the after effects of combat can be a lifelong problem that can end lives prematurely. PTSD is often one of those side effects impacting soldiers and their families, leading to many unintended consequences. Now, Camp Hope is here to help. I mean, Tony Busby lies. He says one thing here. We're going to do it. Something else over there. Like Sylvester Turner. I have no idea what you're talking about. Tony Busby will say and do anything to get your vote. He can't be trusted. Bill King is the honest, experienced candidate you can count on in the Houston mayor's race. Vote Bill King and let's clean up City Hall and get back to basics. And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers for what I believe is a very important segment. Let me introduce you to David Malsby. He is the executive director of the PTSD Foundation of America and Camp Hope, uh, interim housing for wounded warriors and their families suffering from combat-related PTSD. Chip Miller is a vice president of Weatherford International. That's an oil field services company, a major supporter for Camp Hope. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, I, and, and thanks for being involved in this project. To talk about 
uh, Camp Hope and what it means to veterans who may be suffering PTSD. For Camp Hope and our veterans, veterans coming from all across the country, every branch of service, every era of service, we've had Vietnam vets, we've had Korean War vets, uh, and obviously a lot of our post 9-11 guys from Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, many times it's their last stop is their last chance of hope at starting a new life. Many of them have attempted suicide prior to coming to us, coming to us from veterans courts, psych wards at VA hospitals, or living out in the Sam Houston forest. But it's a place where they come, they feel the camaraderie of being back amongst their brothers, fellow combatants, and a place of safety. You know, Weatherford, um, you, you could have chosen a lot of other mm -hmm. organizations to get involved in. Why this project? I think we're a, a large U.S. organization. We employ a lot of people throughout the U.S. We employ a lot of vets. Uh, a lot of people like myself have a long history uh, with military services. So uh, when we take a look at all of the different uh, people we can help support, this one easily percolates to the top. I think one, one of the best ways to get a sense of what goes on at Camp Hope is the way that it's helping veterans, and it's to hear from a couple of them. Here's an example of what goes on there in a video that's provided to me by the PTSD Foundation. One is way too many, and we're losing 22. Camp Hope was an original dream of ours when we began the foundation that someday we would have a place where the veterans who are really struggling. When I came home from Afghanistan, within the first couple of weeks, I knew something was off. I wasn't the same guy. What is a soldier supposed to do when he comes home? Strange, like, noises would creep me out. I had nightmares constantly. Completely lost my family. You can't begin to rebuild if you don't understand what first was broken. Your sister's wedding, you're not invited. Don't show up, don't come. Every bit of evidence points to peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. One of the guys looks at me and says, I know how you're feeling. I'm like, yeah, man, you do, because you were there and you did it. Talk with somebody else who understands. Okay, you've been through some horrible crap. It's one veteran who's been there, understood, and they've come back, they've gone through the readjustment, and they've started off on a new life. And that veteran, helping the next veteran come home, works beautifully. I initially tried the alcohol and drug route and it didn't work. Now I found that the more I talk about it with people that have been there and done it, it is what helps. I came here and I was able to put everything else aside. That video, I don't normally do that, but that video I think really scratches the surface. And I do mean just scratches the surface mm -hmm. in trying to tell Part of the challenges that our veterans face, what was it that led to the formation of the PTS found, PTSD Foundation in the first place? Are some of the problems that were exemplified by some of those gentlemen there, is it not in terms of them feeling disconnected in so many different ways? Oh yes, the reintegration back into the civilian world is very difficult and uh, one of the things that's really been struggling, uh, a big struggle for the post-9-11 veterans, going to war multiple deployments, day-to-day uh, -day going, kicking down doors and searching houses. and Then you come home and America's at the mall and their largest concern is about, you know, did, they, well, did their latte get made properly? And they know they've got buddies back in a war zone dealing with some of the most horrible things. I saw that 22, uh, in the video it was there, you can see a little bit of that, but 22 veterans' suicides per day, is that the stat that I saw? That's correct. And, you know, to try to put that in perspective, um, if you have 20 people die in any situation, whether it's a, an automobile crash, a bus crash, a shooting at a Walmart, it's on the news all day, every day, sometimes for weeks. We're losing that many every single day to their own hands. That's men and women who've gone to war, come home, and uh, their mom's getting a phone call they should never get and the community has to step up. They've got to step up. We, we have to help them come home. I want to talk to you, Chip, about uh, Weatherford and this Camp Hope process that you have going on. But before that, um, w w Camp Hope was set up to provide a place for families. And h how is that facility different than anything else that's out there to help PTSD vets? We've asked everybody we know 
does anybody else do this? Because we want to learn from someone who else has done it. But to our knowledge, no one else takes in the spouse and the kids when they're dealing with combat-related PTSD. But to be able to house that family together and help them learn how to communicate and work together again as a functional family is a key to what our, we believe is our long-term success in not only saving the veteran's life, but changing it for the long, long haul. And your company has really put hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars into this effort. What kind of challenges have you seen in getting to that point? And what kind of commitment is your company making to help take it to the next level, whatever that next level may be? Yeah, so when you take a look at Camp Hope, you see uh, a lot of facilities. The one facility that was kind of missing that helped the family uh, are apartments that families can live in together while uh, the individual, whether male or female, is going through the process. Uh, one thing we've been able to do is with Weatherford Walks raise enough money to help them build that facility for families. And, and that involves your people coming to volunteer. I saw some video where mm. your folks were out there actually getting their hands dirty doing the work as well. Yeah, I think uh, Camp Hope is very good about getting people out to to paint, to, to help <laughs> roof, to do, you know, whatever is necessary. And of course, the, the Weatherford people are always happy to help. What is the challenge many times I've been reading about veterans who sometimes don't know what's going on in their bodies. They don't know that it's PTSD, and that may be one of the biggest challenges of getting them to know they need to come to you for help. That's always our biggest challenge. I mean, obviously we need money to do what we do, but the biggest challenge is always getting in front of that veteran before he becomes a statistic. So in war or in joining the military, they are trained to do their job, and they do a, a really good job, best in the world at what we do in the military. But they're not trained on how to bring that home. And that's what we have to deal with. That's what we have to work with and help these guys understand they can have purpose and meaning when they come home and honor those that they lost while they were in war. But we've got a lot of guys that come into our program. Uh, they lost one or two while they were in war and they've lost 15 or 20 since they've come home. And that has got to change. Our community has to hear that and understand we have to step up to help make that change. Well, we're trying to do that this morning, getting yes, this are. information out there any way we can. I noticed we talked about the one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. that a veteran talking to another veteran really has been effective. How has that evolved to rise to the level of effectiveness that it is? Peer-to-peer -peer is proven to be the most effective uh, tool in dealing with our combat-related uh, PTSD veterans. Uh, one vet goes to a, a psychiatrist or psychologist, and many choose to do that, and that's great. Uh, we put all of our guys in front of psychiatrists, and psychologists, licensed counselors, but all day, every day, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. That's someone who understands what they've experienced, lost what they've lost, smelled what they've smelled, and really understand this is what happened. I did things that, you know, if, if the world saw what I did, they wouldn't approve, but I had to do it to bring my guys home. That's hard to live with sometimes. So talking about that with others who've had that same experience is what helps them come home. Chip, you've been able to see what's been going on up to this point. What's your hope going forward for what this organization and the Camp Hope itself may ultimately become? I think uh, Camp Hope is that bastion of hope that was not out there before. Uh, obviously, with support from Weatherford and, and lots of other sponsors that are out there, uh, we need to make this grow within a controlled environment, but we need to get this access out to more and more people. Uh, and they have an excellent business model. Uh, they just need community support. Uh, these things are run by the community. They're, you know, the community support is what actually makes them successful. Do, do you get uh, government help? Not a dime. Not a dime mm. for any of this? No, sir. It's all community driven. That's more of a reason to get involved. I want to put information on our website about ways that people can get involved to help the PTSD Foundation of America and Camp Hope. Hopefully people will just, right after this program, get online and go do that. I mean, we've got to help veterans and their families. Very important to do that. David Malsby, Chip, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate what you're doing, and uh, good luck going forward with what we're doing with our veterans. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. Just ahead, as we finish up National Bullying Month, we'll talk with a man who has taken on the challenge of doing what he can to stop the bullying of children and adults. We'll talk about what he's doing, and in particular, the challenge as it relates to cyberbullying. That's next, when Houston Newsmakers continue. Gritty, tough, and virtually empty.
indestructible. Toyota trucks were made to withstand anything your weekend might throw at them. Hurry into the Toyota tailgate event for a great deal on all of your favorite Toyota trucks that were built for weekend fun. During the Toyota tailgate event, get $3,000 customer cash. For qualified buyers, get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2019 Toyota Tundra. Toyota, let's go places. Before digging in my yard, I always call 811 to have my utility lines marked to avoid service interruptions or injury. As Centerpoint Energy says, it's better to call 811 now than 911 later. And if I suspect a gas leak, I leave the area immediately on foot and call Centerpoint Energy and 911 from a safe, remote location. <laughs> Really? Centerpoint Energy invests in its infrastructure to help keep you safe. Centerpoint Energy. Always there. <laughs> Are you the ghost of Christmas past? Nah. I'm the future of shopping. With the Low Payment Finder from Consome Plus, get cool stuff today with low payments over time. Good credit. We're building it. More holiday. Less humbug. Get Black Friday pricing now at Cons Home Plus on all Samsung QLED TVs. And lower than Black Friday pricing on furniture sets. Plus up to 50% off Black Tag appliances. At AT&T, we believe in access. The opportunity for everyone to explore a digital world full of possibilities. Connecting with family, friends, and the things that matter most. And because nothing keeps us more connected than the Internet, we've created access from AT&T. If a member of your household is a SNAP participant, you may qualify for home internet at a discounted rate of $10 a month. No commitment, deposit, or installation fee. Visit att.com slash access now to learn more. Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, and welcome to Jamie Kagundu, an attorney who by trade does entertainment and sports law, but... He is an advocate in the fight against bullying, and in particular, cyberbullying. So why are you in this fight? I mean, I know you said that you just posted something uh, a while back, and you were surprised at the way that people reacted. You didn't know it was as big a deal that, that you found out. So now why are you taking this fight on? Uh, I'm taking the fight on because I was surprised to know that there was such a lack of information and a need for somebody to provide information on the subject matter of cyberbullying. Um, parents, educators, uh, even politicians have, have, have reached out to say, tell us more about what we can do to, deal, to handle this subject matter. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that most of them kind of miss out on in terms of understanding what cyberbullying is or the dangers of it? So, so the dangers of cyberbullying uh, in the mind of most parents above a certain age uh, aren't really recognized. Most people go back to the days where they would say something along the lines of, toughen up. You have a situation that you're facing, toughen up, handle it. But they're unaware of the psychological impact that cyberbullying has, whereas in the traditional sense of a bullying incident, you would see physical uh, effects. You might see bruising, you might see um, damaged material. Uh, and you could say, okay, well, this is how you defend yourself against one attacker. But a parent of a, of a deceased young man who took his life due to cyberbullying explained to me that cyberbullying is akin to a gang attack, whereas you are defending yourself psychologically against hundreds of people. By way of example, if I were to go to a social media app and say something negative about you, and other persons were to like my comment, chime in on the comment, uh, or even just view the comment, mm -hmm. every single one of those actions from all the different users is a different attack on your psyche. And, and that is different, and, and parents need to understand that fact. And there has been an evolution once upon a time, as you said, it was easy to define. Now we have Facebook and Twitter and all the social uh, medias, including telephones, connecting people, bullying them in one way, shape, or form or another. And now you were talking about a parent whose child died, committed suicide, apparently, because yes. of this. Yes. And so now it's a deadly issue. Um, what goes on now? I know there's a, a law in, in the state that has been in place now that is specifically because of cyberbullying. Talk about David's law. Certainly. So September 2017, Senate Bill 179, also known as David's Law, was enacted. And part of the reason that it was enacted was through the efforts of the Moloch family. Uh, the Moloch family lost their son, David, to suicide 
Um, he attempted several times to reach out to the schools uh, that David was attending about the issue that he was facing and, and were disturbed to learn that the law did not adequately arm the schools with abilities to punish for activities that took place off of campus. Mm -hmm. Now, through David's law, schools have the power and authority to punish actions that take place off campus. Parents are also allowed to pursue injunctions against the bully and the bully's family. Now, that, and that's key, is it not? I mean, the fact when you put a parent who said, well, I didn't know my child was doing that, that's not an excuse anymore. That parent can be held responsible if your child is actually bullying, cyberbullying somebody else. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, a restraining order can be entered against that family and, and, and the child. Yeah, and outs outside of David's law, you can also sue that parent uh, for negligence. We, we have duties to monitor those persons that are in our charge. And the failure to monitor what your child is doing can expose you as a parent to various causes of action. And this whole process came about quite accidentally for you in terms of your taking on this as a project, if you will. What do you hope is going to come from this newly acquired knowledge that you have about what needs to be done and what can be done? We're hoping to save lives, first and foremost. Um, hoping that the information that parents, families, educators take from what we're able to share empowers people, lets them know that there are options, you know, gives them steps of which they can address this situation because most people don't know how to address it. You have to stay current with, with technology. That's one of the first things that parents and educators must do. There's a fear of technology that happens, I believe, as we age. Um, and unfortunately, the youth are in, in born into technology and so if you're not understanding it you're not speaking their language mm -hmm. you can't understand the impact um, of what's happening to them so first you have to familiarize yourself with technology you have to educate your your kids on safe uses uh, you, you don't give a, a child uh, keys to your vehicle and say good luck you, you you navigate them you nurse them through the program and then you turn them loose so you have to work on safe methods as well how big of a challenge is that because kid, you're parenting these days you know give the kid something to just go ahead and, and take it over and kind of just do your own thing I mean it's it, it obviously from what you've seen that clearly is not the right way to go that there needs to be some sort of guidelines for that child along the way that's not an easy concept to put into place. So. It, it's not an easy concept, but, but people need to understand this. One in five girls will be cyberbullied. One in ten boys will be cyberbullied. Ninety-two percent of teens are using social media, and one of the leading causes of teen death is suicide. Cyberbullying has an impact on that child's psychology, and so it is a, it is a significant task to undertake, but as, as a parent myself, um, it's one worth fighting. Um, and as uh, parents and educators and, and anybody who has somebody that they love, a, a niece, a nephew, that is, a, that is somebody that's in need of this information. How can people help you? How can they get in contact with you to help move this forward? Uh, they can visit jamiespeaks.com. Uh, jamiekspeaks.com. They can go to David's Legacy Foundation. Um, they can do a search of David's Law uh, through normal Google search. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Unexpected for you, clearly, but taking Certainly. on a whole new challenge is going to make a difference in the world. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you, Jamie. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Different time. way to spell Jamie, but we appreciate that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, final thoughts and a look ahead to next week when we've all got a lot on our plates, or we should. We'll talk about that when Houston Newsmakers continues. Can the birth control pill change a woman's personality? We'll have the research every woman should know. Cut your cell phone bill in half. The wireless carriers that will give you the same coverage as the big networks for far less money. Monday morning on Channel 2 News Today. Freedom. Freedom. 
I'm the son of a meat cutter and a school bus driver. When my family couldn't make ends meet, I took two full-time jobs. After school, I served our country overseas. And from the Marines, I went to law school so I could start a business that stands up for the powerless who've been harmed by the powerful. I'm Tony Busby. You can count on me to fight the powerful and stand up for you because I always have. It's game day live here at Bill and Julie's house, a fan favorite venue ever since they got gig speed internet. Xfinity gives them the ultimate home field advantage. It's their 12th man. Hey, Amy, you wanna grab a seat? Julie. We're live. It's game on with gig speed internet from Xfinity. Start him, sit him, trade him. Simple, easy, awesome. Check out gig speed internet or any of our other amazing speed options. Get started now for as low as $29.99 a month for 12 months. Click, call, or visit a store today. Grab your boots and join me at MD Anderson's Boot Walk to End Cancer on Saturday, November 9th at 1 p.m. You can be a part of MD Anderson's mission to end cancer. Just visit mdanderson.org slash bootwalk today to register for this family fun event. Happy 70th anniversary to my KPRC Channel 2 family. Have you voted yet? You've had two weeks of early voting to get to the polls, and all of us in the state have had something to vote for or against, including... 10 Texas propositions dealing with amending the state constitution. One of the hottest and most talked about races is, of course, that of Houston mayor. But there are also 16 city council races involving 112 candidates. So city of Houston voters have homework that should have been done. The point is, Tuesday is your day to vote. If you haven't done so already, please make it a point to do so. Some early indications are that early voting numbers have been down, which is not a shock. But a shame, we can't complain about anything if we haven't taken the time to vote, as apparently some of the candidates on the ballot have reportedly not bothered to do in recent years. In the coming weeks, we'll be efforting in-depth conversations about a number of issues, including the latest reports by the Texas Education Agency and its recommendation that the Houston Independent School District, in essence, be taken over by the state, something HISD is resisting in court filings. One thing is certain, the largest school district in the state is a mess. We'll be working to sort it out here on Houston Newsmakers. My thanks this morning to David Malsby, Chip Miller, and Jamie Kagundu for helping to shine some light on issues that are important to our community. To see some of those segments again, go to clip2houston.com under Newsmakers. We hope you do so. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you back here again next week.